We talked about a, a something like this several months ago, but now apparently some either reputable or formerly reputable publication or entity has reported a valuation of AEW wrestling. And Brian, uh, so of course then the people who like that kind of thing have taken it and run with it. But if you examine the situation and you see where the the information came from it mitigates it somewhat but was it forbes forbes online not magazine they didn't maybe didn't want to put it on paper has said that aew is valued at two billion dollars that is correct forbes just put up an article april 18 2024 the most valuable combat sports promotions 2024 by Mike Ozanian and Justin Teitelbaum. And well, and those got to be assumed names. Nobody wanted to put their fucking name on this. I'm just quickly reading through the uh, early part here to see if they explain how they came to these conclusions. Well, I heard one of their sources was Uncle Dave. But while you're scanning through that, it, we'll talk about this in, in a couple of departments, but this has led... Two people going out of their minds on Twitter or whatever about, well, that's why Vince has $2 billion. He's going to buy AEW. Have you seen this yet? I have not. It's ridiculous because Tony wouldn't sell it to him. Well, but, but like Vince would spend his $2 billion to buy this. To be, I mean, there's so many things wrong with this. Oh, my God. But do you have your information there? I have my information here. We'll get to wrestling, but why don't we go in order until we get there? Number one sure. on the list worth $11.3 billion is the UFC. Their 2023 revenue, $1.29 billion. Their operator, Dana, 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 Dana White. And their top draws are, and it lists a few of the fighters here. Number two on the list. $6.8 billion for WWE. Their 2023 revenue, $1.33 billion, which is above the UFC, actually. Yeah. Operator Nick Khan, top draws, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Rhea Ripley. WWE has been the premier name in professional wrestling since it was founded by Vince McMahon, who purchased what was then known as WWWF from his father in 1982. So there's already okay. problems... For for the sake of brevity, we'll excuse the various initial errors and general bah. They dropped ahead. WWWF in 79, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. With stars like Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and The Undertaker, WWE and its annual WrestleMania events became a cultural phenomenon. Today, WWE reaches more than 1 billion people weekly across the globe with its three television shows and produces more than 200 live events every year. Any comments? Oh, no, I'm, I'm waiting for more. I'm, I'm okay. We got, so that was number two, six well, point we, eight billion. We got a, a, the only thing I've, I've got to say so far is it seems like the WWE ought to be valued at about the same thing as the UFC. Where do they get the fucking four and a half billion dollar fucking leg up? Now, this next one is the one everyone's talking about. No. And this is uh, two or three free articles from Forbes. Let me X this but out. But they can't be number three. What the? Number three worth $2 billion, oh. AEW. Their estimated 2023 revenue, again, they're privately owned, so there's no public record. Estimated 2023 revenue, $250 million. Operator, Tony Khan. <laughs> the top draws, Young Bucks, John <laughs> Moxley, Kenny <laughs> Omega. The youngest yeah. promotion on the list, AEW became the primary challenger to WWE when it launched in 2019. AEW got immediate legitimacy from superstars like Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, while a partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling and the purchase of Ring of Honor had helped the young brand build its roster and match library. Tell me you don't know anything about wrestling without telling me you don't know anything about wrestling. But it will, I'm more, more shocking is this is a list of combat sports leagues. Is there no other combat sports league? No 
I mean, at one time it might have been Strike Force, at one time it might have been Bellator, what to, but there's no other mixed martial arts league in the world, no other fucking boxing entity. We 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 go UFC, we go WWE, and then it falls cascading down the mountain to AEW and this ridiculous valuation. But there's n- nothing else out there. But you got to look at everything in perspective. Now AEW two billion dollar valuation is completely ridiculous. We'll get to that. But here's the rest of the list, real quick. Number four, worth one point three billion, one championship. I believe that is an MMA company. Yes, yes. Number five, worth $850 million, matchroom boxing. Okay. Number not, a, not a big boxing name like Don King anymore, is there? Number six, worth $690 million, the PFL, the Professional Fighting League, I believe. Number seven, worth $630 million, top-ranked boxing. Bob Arum's still alive. Oh my God, what is he now? Is he fucking older than Wayne Newton? He's got to be in his 90s. Hold on, Bob. Bob, yeah, look up Bob Arum. Jesus Christ, he, he promoted... Yeah, he promoted David versus Goliath. He is at uh, number seven on the list. Number eight, Premier Boxing Championship, worth 600 million. Number nine, Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar De La Hoya, 450 million. And finally, number 10, Combate Global, worth $120 million. That's Campbell McLaren, the guy from the early days of the UFC working for Bob Meyerowitz. There you go. $120 million. And of course, since these figures are all apparently just pulled completely out of this fucking guy's ass, except for well, that, that's the break. UFC and WWE, because they're publicly traded, that uh, there's some element of that's a legitimate real-world valuation. Here's a, there's a few things here. One... People who don't pay attention to the financial world or remember Steve Forbes when he ran for president or even remember what Forbes magazine was before that, this isn't that. In 1982, to be a rich kid, I had a picture taken of me reading a Forbes magazine, and that was 40 years ago. I don't know anyone who reads it. Let's put it that way. And I know a lot of people read a lot of things about money. So it's not what it once was. And looking at this list, it's not an AEW issue because everyone's focused on that. And again, WWE is undervalued based on, you know, any multiple you want to do. Yeah. AEW is overvalued. I have to think a lot of these other promotions are overvalued as well, to be quite honest with you. And the AEW one, it references the purchase of Ring of Honor. Tony Khan purchased that. He's made note of that many times. That's a separate thing than AEW. So it actually has nothing well, to do it, with AEW. Well, but it bolstered his roster, though. The wording of the article is tortured, but the meaning is clear. It bolstered his roster of, a, of another 40 fucking guys that he doesn't have any room to use, and it, many of them aren't worth it. So here's how the valuation works. A valuation is what someone would pay for it. So you have to ask yourself realistically, you know, unless it's like the Saudis with magical oil money, would someone pay $2 billion for AEW? And if so, what would they get? Unlike WWE, and they're making layoffs, we've heard about in the last few weeks of people who are longtime veterans of the company because they're merging the companies together. But they have an infrastructure. Is there any infrastructure in AEW? If you bought AEW, would you say, all right, Tony's selling it. He's going to get out of the way. At least we got this executive team. We'll go to the, uh, to the AEW tower and talk to the executives and the marketing department and the production chief and all of these people in this entity, and we will tell them that we have bought it and we are now the new owners, and there will be... Oh, a hundred or two hundred people there at least for well, goddamn, that's back when WWF was a just a measly, you know, under a billion dollar company. There'll be three or four hundred people in this office all doing these various chores for a two billion dollar company, and we'll be able to direct them to keep doing what they're doing. That's what you're saying, right? I'm saying there's no infrastructure, there's no executive team that any buyer would want to keep on. So now there's no infrastructure that's gonna have to be restaffed. You mean that to tell me that a lot of these people, either like the former legal chief, also did work for the 
the football teams and the other entities under Shad's umbrella, but you're saying that also that most of these people were hired because they were either fans or close to some of the indie wrestlers and their heads of departments that would need to go? What I'm saying is this. Take the booking out of the picture for now. Look at everything else with AEW. If you purchased AEW, $2 billion. If you purchased AEW, what department do you think is doing well? Is it marketing? Is it promotion? Is it advanced ticket sales? I mean, what department do you think is, you know what? We definitely don't want to mess with this department. They have value. No one. There's nothing there infrastructure-wise. And again, their COO just started. Let's see what happens. There's nothing there. So you have nothing there. What are you buying? You get the tape catalog. There's some value there. Is it in the billions of dollars worth of value? No. The wrestling contracts. How much value is that? How much well, value is you overpaid a bunch of people? It's the most expensive roster potentially the most expensive guaranteed roster in the history of wrestling. And if not very close to, I would think what WCW had in the late nineties, if not exceeding that, maybe adjusted for inflation, maybe come out even. Let's talk consumer electronics. How's that video game? It's an epic disaster. Somebody just tweeted the, t the $10 aisle now at Walmart, Fight Forever. Someone just tweeted there were less people playing Fight Forever than like the WWE 2K game from like 2019, live online right now, or you know, when they sent it. So there's, no, there's nothing there. You have no value now with the video game division, and you've hurt your credibility by putting out a game that wasn't ready, even amongst the people that like you. So there's no value there. Tony has built this whole thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The television? That's Boy. what I was going to say. That's the point, Boy, though. Boy, howdy. You know, there are two, four, five hours of weekly national cable television. Tony has built this whole thing by publicly saying it'll all make sense, it'll all work out, because when the renewal comes up, I'm going to make a killing. We're very valuable. This is what we're going to be able to do. Since that period of time, the overall rating has gone down drastically. I believe the key demo is not as high as it used to be either. It's a company constantly, whether you want to believe it's self-induced because it is, or whether you want to deny it, they're constantly in the middle of drama. You don't think executives notice that? Anything like that, it turns people off too. Tony's publicly talking about wanting to get this giant ratings increase. So when someone throws uh, their right, card... Right, yeah, yeah, he wants a ratings increase, but oh, no, he wants excuse a me. Right, rights increase, Rights too. increase. So when someone throws their cards in front of the table, the network should say, okay, actually, you're underperforming where you were performing when they gave you... When your friend gave you that nice raise a few months in. <laughs> you're underperforming that. We think you should get less. You don't, we don't see the added value from 2019 or 2020 to now. Well, now, uh, hold on, hold on. There is added value because if has been intimated and hinted at and almost outright admitted, WBD, the corporate entity, what, they've got a piece of the pay-per-views and Tony's now announced, <laughs> we're just good, fuck it, we're going to do a pay-per-view every month for the rest of the year. He's trying to bump that something up, right? The problem is if Tony walks out of this with a deal with Warner Brothers Discovery and there's no giant bump in money, then the obvious becomes obvious to everyone that it isn't a real business. It's a hobby that could exist no matter what financial windfalls happen. Now, if he gets $250 million a year, that'd be pretty incredible. Is he? Well, that, that, and see, that's the thing is that you can draw on public records and statements with TKO, UFC, WWE, and those numbers are legitimate. They gross a billion fucking dollars or whatever. With a, where did he gross 250? Let, examine these amounts of money. Where did he gross $250 million without spending $500 million to do it? 
Because you look at the half-empty buildings, you look at the guaranteed contracts for the stars and the the bigger signings, and the the production ain't cheap. And so that for a two billion dollar value, the the conspiracy nuts that say, "Well, that's why Vince has got that two billion dollars, right?" Do you think that Vince would buy this company that Tony's already kind of started and fucked up? For two billion dollars, would if he wanted, to, Vince had all the money he was ever going to need for the rest of his life before he got this two billion dollars, right? So let's just pull this out of our ass too and say Vince has two billion dollars to spend on wrestling. He could go to fucking TBS and say, "Dump these other guys and just fucking run my show with my new company. You don't have to pay me anything. Just put me on the air," and he wouldn't give a shit because he's got two billion. He, I'm almost positive that $2 billion would come close to buying either TBS or TNT out from under the goddamn WBD BDSM empire they've got going on over there. Can you Google how much is TBS worth as a network alone or would it be the valuation of the whole empire? Because the point is, if you're talking about that much money, then Vince would have no incentive whatsoever to fucking make any for five fucking years at this ridiculous rate and could just go in and say, I'm going to sign up all of his guys when their contracts are over with. I'll provide you the show for free. I'm going to promote pay-per-view like we used to back in the old days. And you just air my show. And he could do any fucking thing, but he wouldn't do that because he, he, he w- he wouldn't purchase something that he could fucking start on his own for less than that and fucking undercut everybody. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So what uh, what is why do people th- believe these things? So when we're talking about what are you selling, the television deal of if, if again if, at some point the next year Tony said I'm going to sell it, the television deal will be a part of it. You always have to worry about someone taking over a station and just saying, I don't want wrestling or even I don't want anything that looks so much like a markdown from WWE right now, yeah. which is sellouts and it looks beautiful and the camera work and everything. You don't know. Yeah. So if, if you tried to buy it now, you would be getting basically the, the WWE talent equivalent of one of those three year contracts where they can cut you every three months. It, 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 if if you bought the company and the current rights deal that expires within six to nine months or whatever the fuck it is, then you're, you've got a six to nine month fucking guarantee you're on the air. And then what the fuck could Tony sell it for 650 million? Probably 2 billion. You have to find someone who's just going to be loose and fast with money, not caring about the P and L like Tony, you have to find someone who's going to think about it like Tony, because no network can buy that just for content because the archive isn't worth that much. And we've learned from TBS. It's not that easy to just buy a company and put executives in charge. (sighs) Yeah, that worked out so well the first time, didn't it? Wouldn't that be a, would that not be a kick in the head as Dean Martin used to say, if TBS turned around and said, Tony, you're struggling financially. We'll bail you out. We'll buy this thing for whatever. And they did the same thing. 40 years later. See, they're in a great position. Now, I, I've read that the exclusive negotiating period has ended. So Tony could shop the AEW package, including Ring of To Lion. who? Well, that's the question. Is there someone out there who's going to pay more than TBS? The, uh, okay, again. And WWE's WWE... already doing business with, not Fox anymore, but doing business still with USA, so that's NBC. Right. Netflix, which is bigger than people probably realize. Well, it's people certainly argue. surprised me. Yes, but but that's the point. WWE just went through all of this, and we know who. Basically, we believe we know mostly who was interested and who won. Obviously, and some of those people ain't going to be interested in a distant number two wrestling promotion, are they? So. <laughs> And then Tony got TBS because 
the guy that what was the guy's name originally that put him on the air? Kevin he Riley. Kevin Riley. He didn't even know. He had no idea that TBS had owned a wrestling company at one point because it had been 20 fucking years, right? And this was a new guy, but he knew Tony because of the 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 football and the soccer and the this and that and the other thing, the, uh, the chrome bumper hitches, whatever the fuck they're all into. And uh, Tony told him, yeah, yeah, you guys used to own the rivals to Vince. We did. And that's how that whole thing started, but that guy's not there anymore. And uh, again, you know, he's the one that gave him a raise, right? Very soon afterwards. And he ain't there no more. Did I mention that? And I don't I don't know what kind of leverage they've got because who's going to want to bid when they look at the track record, the, the way the show looks because of the buildings being empty, the fucking ratings pattern trending downward and a constant drama where you're not going in and dealing even if they don't like Vince. A lot of these network TV people had... When they dealt with the WWE, they had four or five people that they could meet with that didn't include Vince. It still came off as goddamn competent adult professionals high up in the company. Who, who would that, who's the next besides Tony most important person there? Jack Kirby, the new COO. And then do they have a Nick Khan? Do they have a Triple H? Do they have a goddamn all the other people Vince has had speaking for his office staff? Here's an interesting question. Does Tony sign a deal if it's for a giant increase? Let's say $200 million a year. Something crazy. But he has to listen to network suggestions. Ooh. Or he has to step down from being the head of creative. Ooh. That's a question. Or, you know, if they said we want a bigger piece of the pie. If he ends up back on their doorstep, still negotiating with them, you know, that's the question. What, does Tony want to support AEW to the point where he'll step back? Well, it, I believe that he would take less money. I, I believe that in a heartbeat. And I believe that he would agree to listening to network suggestions, because you know how that goes. Uh, a lot of people listen to, oh, we listen to your suggestions, blah, blah, blah. That could drag on forever and end acrimoniously. But if they said, no, you, you can't run this company anymore, I think he'd tell them to go piss off and he'd be on fucking YouTube. And, and, I, and that's where we're at. But anyway... If someone offered him $2 billion, his father would punch him out if he didn't take it. <laughs> Seriously. AEW's not worth anywhere near that much. If he got offered that much, he would be a fool not yeah, to take you, that. Yeah, you know what? At, at that point, Shad would say, okay, Tony, now listen, we've had a lot of fun, but I've, I've raised you to be a businessman, and this is fucking ridiculous. Tony, I don't know if we're ever going to find a deaf mute buyer again. Just take yeah. the money. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking that $2 billion, or I swear to God, I'll live forever and never give you another penny. <laughs> Oh, but, but please, folks, and we're not doing this to knock AEW. It's just ridiculous. Two billion dollars. It's like val valuing impact at $250,000. It's just way out of the realm. No, I'm, That's I'm kidding. It's, uh, but two billion dollars. Come on. And then that mean that would mean that the WWE was worth about fucking $30 billion around the world, right? I'd, 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 I still think they would, they'd would take $2 billion in cash, no goddamn funny money, no credit, no whatever. The, but $2 billion in cash, you could buy TBS off of them down there. Fuck. Anyway, you know, the, the, the big problem, Brian, <laughs> the big problem with people believing all these big numbers is because they're used to paying all these inflated numbers for prices. Do you realize? Do you realize that steak used to be nine cents a pound? Do you no, realize? I didn't that, know Brian? that. No, I didn't, never thought about it. No. Steak used to be nine cents a pound back in 1882 when they just took a dull knife and cut it off the cow's ass, drug it through some sawdust to preserve it, 
and slapped it down on the butcher's counter where it sat there for about a month or six weeks until you had enough money to buy it. And boy, that was good eating. But things, everything has, has gotten wow. more expensive. Yeah, it certainly has. Everything has gotten more expensive because that's just the nature of the way that things happen in the world. A lot of people complain about that, but it's true. But there's only one thing, Brian, that's going down in price, down in cost, and up in affordability instead of through the roof in cost and down in affordability. Do you have any idea what that might be? I have no idea where you're going in any way, no. I'll tell you, it's the cell phone plans at Mint Mobile. The premium, well, I can't even call it a cell phone plan because that, that makes it sound too insignificant. It's a premium wireless plan. That's what you're getting. No wires come with this plan where you do not have to, you don't even have to ever plug your phone in again. They just send a goddamn signal to it and it charges the battery. It's completely wireless, this whole plan. And because Mint Mobile feels that they should take prices backwards instead of forwards, you can get these plans for only $15 a month when you purchase the three-month plan. That would be a total of $45 because 15 times 3 is 45, and you see I'm, I'm good at the ciphering. <laughs> but that's what, that's what, you get everything. You get to talk. You get, you get to make phone calls on your phone. And that used to be, do you, are you old enough, Brian, you, did you used to pay long distance phone bills? Oh yeah. I used to pay them for calling you. Yeah. Well, now you don't have to do that anymore. You spoiled little cretins. It used to be $250, $300 a month. If you talked a lot on the long distance now, $15 a month. And that's not just talking because you can also do the texting thing like the kids do. An unlimited amount of that. You can drive everybody you know absolutely batshit crazy and make them never want to see or hear from you again. You can text them that much, still $15 a month. And the data, whatever the fuck that covers. What does data cover on a cell phone, Brian? Succinctly, tell me. It's everything. It's the pictures. It's the texting. It's all the things that would comprise the word data or be comprised in the word data. There's a comprising and there's data. It is all covered by Mint Mobile. Well, I said Even you're compromising way. data. How about that? Well, they're uncompromising in the way that they'll compromise your data. But all the plans come with all of that unlimited. And it's only $15 a month. And that's why that, for heaven's sake, steak, if it's $15 a pound or $20 a pound, at least we have a Food and Drug Administration now. Well, Mint Mobile is being the Food and Drug Administration of the cell phone plans. They're trying to keep these other son of a bitches honest because they're charging you way too much just for a signal that goes through the free air, the free unrestricted air that we breathe on this planet. And these signals are going, and they're charging you a fortune for it. Nothing's well, free. Well, that's bullshit. Nothing's free. No, you stick a fan in the corner of your room, get your own breeze going, and then fart into it, and you'll get the fucking message. But right now, <laughs> ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get three months of premium wireless service for $15 a month to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan. Go to mintmobile.com slash JCE. That's your, where you're going to get this special price, folks. Mintmobile.com slash JCE. And you cut your wireless bill to $15 a month with all the data, all the pictures, all the compromising. You could actually pick up pictures of other people's fucking families on this thing. It just no, sends you can't. them to you from everywhere. Uh, you can't. I don't even know what this thing would be based on what you're talking well, about. Well, this no, you plan can't. on your phone, a, p a picture of somebody else's Aunt Gladys and a goddamn tutu will pop up because it's unlimited. It's, there's no limits on this. You never know who you'll see. Mintmobile.com <laughs> slash. There are limits. Slash. There's no limits. God damn it. We're out in a wild blue yonder. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month. There are a $45 upfront payment is required because that equals $15 a month for three months for the new customers. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply, but you can see Mint Mobile for details or you can 
No reason to delve more into why you might handcuff yourself for restrictions. Who wants to read about those? Mintmobile.com slash JCE.